I've been a forester for many years of my life. And I can tell you wholeheartedly, you've never seen anything crueler than four goblins torturing a deer that had caught its foot in one of their traps. And that's for no reason other than pleasure. Similar in both culture and appearance to the savage orcs, the forest goblins have in a sense degenerated into a primitive shamanistic culture that revolves around the spiritual veneration of giant spiders that have made the forest their home. The origins of the forest goblins came around the age known as the Time of Woes, during which time the greenskin race migrated from the eastern hemisphere of the Warhammer world into the heartlands of the Old World. Since the goblin tribes first entered the primeval woods of the distant past, they've been prey to spiders that dwelt within the forest for many generations. The goblins eventually adapted to this new form of harsh environment, becoming the precursors to the forest goblin tribes of today. The goblins reasoned that since the powerful arachnids could not be defeated, perhaps they could be appeased. In time, Eight-legged totems festooned with webbed skulls began to appear alongside the traditional idols of Gorgon Mork. Ever since then, the culture of forest goblin communities usually revolve around the worship of spiders as gods that would require a constant supply of flesh sacrifices in order to appease them and to keep them from killing the forest goblins. This is especially prominent when these forest goblins try to appease the great Arachnorok spider in the hopes of luring one into the tribe's service. Eventually, even their shamans were given visions about the spiders and have since turned to worshipping them as the gods of the forest. The tribes followed their shamans in supplicating themselves to this new religion, eventually resulting in the creation of the first spider cult. In time, these forest goblins were able to push back the spiders and have been able to, over time, raise those clutches of spider eggs that they've captured as pets or mounts. Taming the spiders of the forest became a pivotal point in the forest goblins' history, for this allowed the forest goblins to spread their reach out to all of the forested lands of the Old World, where they soon became a belligerent threat to all the lumbering communities, often competing with other forest-dwelling races such as the Beastmen for territorial supremacy. When these goblins go out to raid neighboring communities, forest goblins would often fight alongside war bands of spider riders. Most forest goblins, however, fight on foot and fulfill the same role as skirmishers and archers when engaging the enemy. They are often dressed with feathers that would help distinguish themselves from other forest goblin tribes. The Night Goblins are truly a creature of the darkness, for they mortally hate light of any source, preferring instead to live in total darkness. A subterranean species, these Night Goblins are known only to ever leave their caves and hide out only in the most darkest of nights, where even the moonlight can have the potential to hurt their light-sensitive skin. On the most rarest occasions when they do come out during the daytime, they will always wear extremely dark or black-coloured robes that always help to hide their skin from the sun. This inability to endure the sun's rays all came about when the tribes of goblins began to move eastwards during the Greenskin Migration in 1449 IC. In those ancient times, a tribe of goblins took to living in the caverns and tunnels of the World's Edge Mountains, where they had lived in total darkness for many generations, wearing pitch black clothing and taking up the name of night goblins. They had become so accustomed to the darkness of the caves that they developed extremely good night vision. But as generations of night goblins began their life in total darkness, their skin eventually lost the ability to tolerate sunlight. This disadvantage does little to bother the Night Goblins, for they become a truly powerful faction, 
that has claimed many of the old world tunnels as their own. In the moist darkness of their subterranean homes, a night goblin is surrounded by all manners of mold and mushrooms. Many kinds of toadstool are grown for a variety of uses, such as being consumed as food, mixed in potions, used as medical treatments, fuel glow lights, or used as bait to attract the cave squigs that naturally populate their homes. Displaying even more than their species' usual lack of common sense, individual night goblins are known to gleefully ingest dangerously hallucinogenic mushrooms. Deep in their caves, night goblin shamans are amongst the most feared goblinoid shamans in the World's Edge Mountains. Not only are these creatures powerful magic users, but they are also adept brewers and cultivators of many different species of mushrooms. These shamans grow and cultivate these mushrooms in order to create beverages and potions of many varieties and purposes. Though they are considered slightly smaller, scrawnier, and much more cowardly than even the average goblin, what they lack in size and stature, they make up for in sheer psychotic abandonment. When a leader arises who is both sneaky and cunning enough to focus the boundless energy and spite of the night goblins, he can wield their numbers as a formidable, if unsatable, force. When the tribes are called to war, the mountains are littered with holes, each ensuing forth a steady progression of cackling black hooded goblins. Horrible high-pitched shrieks issue forth from the caves, as does the unpleasant smell of fungus beer and mouldy rot. The army clusters in the shadows, gathering in mobs beneath their tribal banners. Should the moon emerge to light the veils, it would reveal a nightmare as a teeming mass of night goblins swarm out of their hideouts and fall upon the hated surface dwellers. Night goblins are especially cowardly creatures, but unlike those of other goblin tribes, they have been known to create and consume an intoxicating brew called fungus beer, which enables them to fight in a near maniacal state, where they are completely insane and paranoid, and would enhance a night goblin's senses and reflexes, enabling them to fight far better against other stronger foes. Perhaps it is the lack of sunlight or the proximity of so much dank mold and mushroom, but night goblins produce more bulging-eyed lunatics than all the other goblin tribes combined. 